from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Kahane with senior Wikibon analyst Stu Miniman, and you're watching the Cube. In 10 minutes or less, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about DockerCon 2017. Here's the agenda. We're going to start with the basics. What is DockerCon and why you should care? Then we're going to discuss the maturity of the container ecosystem. After that, we're going to talk about Docker as a business. And then we're going to finish by talking about the users and what they should look for at the show. So really excited to have Stu Miniman with me. He is our DockerCon expert. Uh, Stu, how many years have you been at the show? Yeah, so Sam, it's the fourth year of DockerCon. It will be my third show, also the third year we've had theCUBE there. I was at the first one in 2014. Super exciting show. Everybody got all hyped up for a couple of years. We were just Docker, 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 everything. Uh, and then from the second year on, we've done the North American show. Uh, maybe we'll do the Copenhagen show uh, you know, later this year because Docker will be back in Europe. Um, but uh, super exciting. Going to do two full days of live coverage uh, from Austin, Texas, and uh, you'll be joining us. I will be, and who are we, you hosting with? Uh, so John Furrier will be there. So you know, John and I host a lot of the open source shows. Uh, you know, John's known DockerCon since that first 2014. It was actually at a Red Hat Summit. Uh, we interviewed Solomon Hikes, who's the founder of Docker, uh, the company. Uh, and so much history, we can't get through all of it in the under 10 minutes, but uh, you know, super excited for kind of the container ecosystem, everything that's going on. Um, it, it, it's still been uh, you know, a bubbling and exciting area. So you've seen this show grow. Let's talk a little bit about the maturity of the Docker ecosystem. Yeah, so uh, as we said, there's so much history here, Sam. There's the little d Docker, which is the open source project itself, and big D, the company. So let's talk about containers and the ecosystem. So while Docker didn't create containers, Docker is the company that really, really has democratized it uh, for the world. So it reminds me a lot of VMware. So VMware didn't come up with the idea for virtual machines, which actually goes back to like the mainframe era, but they helped bring it into the, the PC world. And in the same way, Docker is really taking uh, this container format, which had existed in, in, in a couple of other operating systems, uh, and it, it takes that, that Linux container, um, which is you know, how we look at uh, you know, bundling things really at the application layer, uh, making it really simple, uh, usually ties into a lot of people talking about how microservices fit into it. A lot of these new frameworks are leveraging containers, so containers are maturing. Um, and some of the problems that we've had in the past with infrastructure, how does it work with infrastructure? How do things like storage and networking work? Um, the community uh, in the container world have been uh, knocking those down, and Docker, the company, has also been knocking those down. So uh, containers are definitely maturing. It's definitely something that, in many ways, we've gone through uh, you know, the peak of hype, uh, through a little bit of the trough of disillusionment, if you follow the, the, the normal hype curve. Um, and today, containers are being used in a lot of ways, what we still want to see is how many companies are actually fully using, you know, containers in production environments. Uh, you know, is it all stateless storage? Is there stateful storage? There's lots of startups, lots of big companies. Everything from, you know, heck, Microsoft just bought a company, Deus, which if you look them up, oh, it's in the container ecosystem. We'll talk about the competitive uh, piece at the end. You know, every cloud today is talking about, uh, uh, you know, containers in there. So. Containers are here to stay. They're an underlying foundational piece of, of what's happening kind of in the infrastructure and application world. Uh, so, and DockerCon is really the, you know, the center place for a lot of us to gather to talk about that. Great, so this is Docker's show. How is Docker doing as a business? Yeah, so it, it's interesting. We had a couple of, uh, it's been some struggles over the last couple of years is to be separating, you know, containers and Docker, the open source, versus Docker, the company. Uh, last year, uh, there were uh, there was a little bit of air sucked out of the ecosystem when Docker said, "Oh, well, we have this way to manage lots of containers. It's called Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm's great. It's it's pretty simple. It works well. But when Docker said, "Well, when you buy our solution, it comes bundled with it." Well, some people were saying, "Well, I might prefer to use Mesos. I might want to do Kubernetes. You know, we've covered you know Kubernetes, really cool stuff. Um, we have KubeCon show that we've done uh, itself." Um, so Docker's like, well, the, the, the old term was uh, batteries incl are included but swappable, but the community kind of bristled at a lot of that. Uh, what I like is that Docker has done some repackaging. Uh, they now have two flavors that, that you can get of, uh, of the Docker solution. Uh, there is Docker CE, which is the community edition, which is the free open source. You know, Releases are coming like every six weeks.
weeks, that can be a tough for a lot of people. And how much do I just take it and use it? So Docker understands that they want to bring this to the enterprise. So they created the EE, or Enterprise Edition, which has release cycles that fits with the enterprise more. It has you know, really the service and support uh, that, you know, that, that you kind of expect there. Um, it reminds me a lot, anybody that's been in this space, you look at uh, what happened in the Linux world, you look at what happened with VMware uh, and their maturation over time, and we see Docker kind of moving in that general direction. Uh, but it still remains to be seen. You know, we go to the show last year. You know, Docker Swarm. Uh, some people got you know frustrated as to what Docker uh, put together. What will Docker announce this year? Will they take on a piece of the ecosystem where people are taking dollars, um, or you know, where are the dollars and how do customers consume are some of the big questions that we look at. What are the competitive dynamics here? Yeah. Uh, so Sam, I mentioned you know containers are fitting in everywhere. Every note that I get from you know cloud players here, it's kind of assumed that there's containers underneath. When you go to Amazon Show, Google Show, Microsoft Show, uh, containers are there, and Docker is in a big way. Most of the cloud services that are put together uh, have Docker. There's great partnership, Docker with Amazon. Microsoft actually created containers for Microsoft. People were like, oh my gosh, you know, I looked at it and said, this is probably going to take three years. Microsoft moved faster than I ever thought they would to be able to make, I can have Linux containers, and I can have the, the Windows containers, and I can actually manage them together. They're not swappable, they're still two different formats, um, but you know, Docker supports, uh, has, has support and worked on both of those. It was amazing to see. Uh, Google uh, is, is greatly involved in containers and, and Docker's there. And of course, I, I can do on-prem uh, solutions also. So uh, competitively, the big question is like, who makes money? Because all of these cloud players, whether you're you know, IBM, Amazon, there's pieces of the pie that they're going to take. Um, so where can Docker actually get a footprint, that big D Docker? Um, because there's lots of companies that I talk to that saying, oh yeah, we're using containers and I use the Docker format, um, but you know, maybe I'm only using the registry from Docker, or oh wait, IBM has a registry, Microsoft has a registry, everybody has that. Where am I actually coming to Docker, the company? Uh, and I think as we see kind of that, that CE and EE uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier play out, uh, Docker does have an opportunity there, but uh, it's an interesting competitive dynamic. There's always that given push from the ecosystem as to Docker built a big ecosystem, and do they eat parts of it, a la Intel in the past, and even VMware has done some of that, um, or can they, they, they live amongst that and make a good living because uh, they were their unicorn. I mean, I, I think they were over a billion dollar in valuation when they had less than $10 million in revenue, which is just one of those astronomical valley things that you look at. But containers are all over the globe, um, huge adoption of the project uh, itself, and uh, it, it's going to be great next week to get the pulse from everybody as to where they are, where they're winning, uh, and what, what customers are doing uh, really cool things with that they couldn't do before they had containers in general and Docker specifically. Yeah, so speaking of the show, uh, it's going to be the biggest Docker con to date. Uh, very excited for that. So, you know, the users and the community that's at the event, what should they look for? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the first thing is, you know, let's look to our peers. You know, what customers are going to get on stage? Are these, you know, uh, you know, ones from the Valley or, you know, the kind of the Web 2.0 companies that you're like, oh, yeah, that's interesting, but, um, you know, people want to see, you know, the financial services companies. People want to see, uh, you know, retail companies. Uh, you know, where are they using, you know, containers? Uh, where are they using it in production? You know, what kind of use cases are they doing? How have they rewritten uh, their, you know, changed their businesses to take advantage of this? Because the business can only move as fast as their, you know, applications are, and Docker is one of those things that can really help, you know, accelerate that pace of change and, and move people along. So, uh, you know, hearing from the users, uh, you know, hearing from that update, uh, hearing that Docker is doing well, uh, you know, understands what their future is, understand where they fit in the ecosystem, uh, I, I think is one thing that we want to kind of take away from that show. Right, and if you're not at the show, uh, you can watch The Cube. So we'll be broadcasting on Tuesday and Wednesday. Yep. Uh, we have some great guests coming on from Cisco, Canonical, Red Hat, Scality, Aguazio, Appalariat, uh, even more companies. Any you know, interviews you're the, really excited for? Like, yeah, so I, I mean, 
first of all, so, you know, some of the Docker executives, you know, we get Solomon Hikes on, uh, you know, is Solomon uh, the uh, benevolent dictator of the Docker community? Um, you know, uh, or, you know, he, he, he's the founder of Docker. So uh, he's great. Uh, ben, uh, you know, is the CEO of the company. Uh, Jerry Chen is the one who invested in it. Uh, and as you mentioned, we've got a bunch of the vendor ecosystem. Big thank to our sponsors that allow us to broadcast from that show um, and hoping to have a few users on. So uh, we always get in some of the keynote people, some of the other guests, uh, any practitioners that are out there that are willing to tell their story. We always appreciate when they can reach out and talk to us. Great. Stu, thank you so much. That's all the time we have today. Uh, watch us next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, full days of coverage from DockerCon. And come by theCUBE on Wednesday. We're going to have Franklin Barbecue at 1 p.m. Yeah.